Dane Wigginton with geoengineeringwatch.org. This is installment number seven of Climate Engineering q and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can on these ongoing 20 to 25 minute segments. I apologize for not being able to get to all questions that have been submitted. Again, I'll roll over others into upcoming sessions of Climate Engineering q and I greatly appreciate all those that have taken the time to write in to geoengineeringwatch.org. If you wish to submit a question to be addressed on Climate Engineering Q&A, you can do so through the following email address, questions at geoengineeringwatch.org. Let's get right to it. First submission for Climate Engineering Q&A. This is from Thomas. Thomas asks, thanks for all you're doing. I appreciate your commitment to getting this information out to the public. The same right back to you, Thomas. It's a team effort. Thomas continues, it's early morning here in the central coast of California, and the temperature is reading 70 degrees at 5 a.m., exclamation point. I looked up the average high temperature for this time of year, which is 66 degrees. I know you have discussed it before, but can you take a little time to talk about how warmer temperatures at night are a sign of what is happening overall? Thanks again. Thank you for your question, Thomas. Yes, it is a harbinger sign of what is happening to our planet. Nighttime low temperatures are rising Overall, I stress that part, overall, twice as fast as daytime highs. Many people now, especially looking at the sensationalized winter weather headlines, not just over the U.S., but over other parts of the world, Scotland, U.K., Spain, the climate engineers are going for broke on their engineered winter insanity. And the sensationalized headlines they create confuse and divide the population as to the true state of the climate. And that's part of the goal, a central part of the goal, to keep the population completely unaware of the totality of meltdown until the last possible moment. So they're chemically nucleating moisture all over the globe. That creates a cold, dense layer of air that settles to the surface, creates these astoundingly low temperatures, is absolutely decimating for ecosystems. This is, again, a, a form of chemically nucleated temperature shock that the ecosystem and the entire web of life can't take. But the climate engineers don't care. But overall, back to your question, Thomas, because the greenhouse gas trapping layers are building up rapidly, it is trapping more heat than can escape back into the atmosphere. And climate engineering itself, though they can deflect daytime thermal energy input from the sun, those same particulates trap that heat at night as well. So from both directions and both factors I just mentioned, We have a thermal energy buildup on the planet. So again, the nighttime low temperature is rising very quickly, and you don't see, what you don't see reported are what you just reported here. A 70-degree temperature on the California coast at 5 a.m. in the morning. That is shockingly high for, for any time of year, let alone this time of year. Not reported, because what media, what the power structure, and what the climate engineers want you to see is cold, cold, cold on a planet that is absolutely plummeting into total meltdown. That's what it is. And it's not just CO2 buildup. It's methane. It's nitrous oxide. There are other gases. None of those are being reported as well. So that's what the bottom line answered your question, Thomas. We have heat being trapped in the atmosphere and from climate engineering particulates as well. And that thermal energy buildup is occurring rapidly. On a final note to all listening to this broadcast, if you want to better understand what is ultimately the core causal factor behind the massive winter weather whiplash temperature swings that we see happening. And and to put that into context, a day ago we had a temperature in Houston of 3 degrees while it was 85 degrees in Miami. This is not nature. This is climate engineering. Search the engineering winter section on the top of the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Go through the entire section to better understand the totality of the climate engineer's ability to chemically nucleate moisture, to alter upper level wind currents, and to create a cold surface level scenario with frozen material. And this is, again, the primary causal factor behind these radical winter weather warfare events that we are witnessing right now across the U.S. and other parts of the world. Thank you for your question again, Thomas. Moving on. From D. D asks, I've tried Googling some of the reports that you mentioned each week. As per your advice to do our own research, Google is not always transparent as of late. What other search engines do you recommend? Unfortunately, D, we're running out of options in that arena. You have DuckDuckGo. You have Bing, which is ultimately owned by, I believe, Microsoft. So there are other smaller search engines. I would recommend going through them until you find one that you feel is not being censored. In regard to Google... It's been about a year and a half ago, geoengineeringwatch.org 
because of our site traffic that's now over 36 million. Our rankings put us at the top of the list, for example, for a search on Google of the term geoengineering. And overnight, we were completely disappeared from any any of our links showing up under that term. A search of the geoengineering term. Yes, if you search our exact website name, yes, you can find us. But the point is, with our name, and that's why we have that name, is that when people search the term geoengineering, they would come to us and find credible data on the issue and not denial. But overnight, Google completely disappeared us, and that's the degree of censorship that we see now. So you have to really dig to find some of these articles, but they're there, and I would encourage everybody to do so. Record important documents that you find so that they can't be vanished offline. But thank you for your question, Dee. Next question, Mary asks, the disaster tourism industry promotes the Northern Lights. Are they more active or vibrant because of geoengineering? Question mark. In regard to the Northern Lights, there's many factors that are likely affecting that phenomenon. And again, we are in uncharted territory, Mary, so it's, it's impossible to completely quantify or conclude as to what all of those factors are are in the increase in frequency. What we can say is this, for example, noctilucent clouds are definitely on the increase. A noctilucent cloud is a silvery or bluish white cloud formation high in the atmosphere. It's generally visible on summer nights in high latitudes in early 21st century because of increases in methane concentrations in the upper atmosphere. Noctilucent clouds are appearing with increasing frequency in lower latitudes. This is a very ominous harbinger. The atmosphere is filling with methane. We've seen methane concentrations as high as 3,000 ppb. That's parts per billion. But methane over a 10-year time horizon is about 120 times more potent than CO2 as a greenhouse trapping gas. And this is where the science community is failing the human race as well. They report that methane is 20 times more potent than CO2. But that is over a 100-year time horizon. Over a 10-year time horizon, it's 120 times more potent. And they are not telling us that. So the bottom line is we are truly in a dark place at this point. And these atmospheric phenomenon and their increase in frequency, especially with noctilucent clouds, is, again, a very ominous harbinger. Thank you for your question, Mary. Morgan asks, have you seen the new single album by Lana Del Rey? Question mark. If you have not, I'll provide the link to you. I've seen that actually, Morgan. Morgan continues to state, perhaps she could be a valuable resource in the fight for truth. Have you tried reaching out to her or her agent to help press this critical issue? Question mark. This is an important subject you bring up, Morgan, and thank you for asking. It's important to reach out to all such people and we need help at Geoengineering Watchdog in doing so. I'm covering as many bases as I can, but I desperately need help with this type of outreach. And it, it comes over better when it's coming from the population and not from us directly. But I have seen the video. It's encouraging that she at least addressed the issue to a degree. And if her agent was bombarded with inquiries from people pressing them to address this issue, perhaps they would respond. There are many others in the entertainment industry that absolutely know this is going on. I have contacts high up in that industry. Geoengineeringwatch.org informational packages have been put in the hands of many, many internationally known celebrities. They have yet to respond in any way, shape, or form. Apparently, they think their wealth and their status will protect them from what's coming, but they're going to be in for rude awakening very soon. So again, that type of outreach is very important that we have help with that. And also reaching authors of articles on climate, on climate engineering, on environmental degradation. All such people need to be contacted and alerted to this issue. It's astounding that they wouldn't know already, but let's just assume they don't. Send them credible data from a credible source. Geoengineering Watch Center will try to remain that source. Yes, we need to wake all of them up. We need to reach a critical mass of awareness, and we are rapidly running out of time. Morgan continues with this. I fully support you, Dane. Keep up the fight. We believe in you. But more importantly, we believe in the human spirit and know that we can still do something. It's always darkest before the dawn. Thank you for that sentiment as well, Morgan. Yes, we could yet make a quantum leap in the right direction. And that leap would start with exposing and halting the single most destructive factor on our planet at this moment in time. And that's saying a lot. 
the single greatest and most immediate threat we face short of nuclear cataclysm. And it's not just highly toxic climate engineering particles that are decimating the atmosphere and contaminating the entire surface of the planet, but what else is being dispersed in these operations? Ask yourself that. What else might they be spraying? What biologicals might be included in this mix? Continuing from Charles, next question. Charles states, Hi there, Dane. I and many others would like to thank you immensely for your tireless efforts and shining example of a true human doing their best to bring this out to the masses of our beautiful planet. Charles, thank you for that sentiment. I'm very grateful for your support, and I am honestly trying just to do what I believe is my obligation to do as a father and as a human being that is only exists because of this miraculous planet. I'm, I'm trying to man my post to do my part as you are doing yours. And again, I'm my same gratitude back to you and every other individual and activist that is standing with us in this battle. So right back to you, Charles. Charles continues, you make people like me who have similarly tried for most of my life to bring light to these and more disgraceful evil plans around the world feel less alone despite us never having met and most likely never will. Again, same back to you, Charles. It's knowing that people like you and all the other activists and individuals that feel a sense of responsibility toward the whole. It's knowing there are people like you in the world and all those that feel the same as us. That That's what keeps me slogging forward in this battle. So again, right back to you and thank you for your support. Charles's question is this. As for my question, it is a two-part of sorts. Do you know where these aircraft are setting off from? Question mark. Commercial or private? Airlines, runways, or secret hidden ones, question mark. In answer to your question, Charles, these aircraft are taking off from airports all over the globe, military and civilian. We know we have military tankers involved. We have film footage of them dispersing at altitude, nozzles visible, turning on and off. We know we have commercial aircraft doing the same. We have the same type of film footage with them. We know that the U.S. DOD is leasing at least 800 commercial aircraft. Why? Why are they using these aircraft? What are they using them for? So again, we can plug all this into the equation. We know we have thousands of commercial aircraft sitting idle. How come there's so much air traffic over certain regions, especially where there's weather events going on? And right now with the massive cool downs going on, there's reports of spraying we're getting from all over the globe that are extraordinary more than ever. They're doubling down on the climate engineering insanity. So bottom line, they're taking off from everywhere and Are the commercial pilots and personnel involved? No, we don't believe they are involved. There would be no need to involve them. But their aircraft are most certainly being used. These systems are automated, and so as long as the aircraft are in the air, it provides a platform by which the climate engineers can increase the overall capability they have to saturate the planet's skies with highly toxic heavy metals, polymers, surfactants, and they are certainly doubling down. We're seeing more aggressive climate engineering operations than ever before. Second part of Charles's question is this. If these are known, are there not enough people in the world now to get ourselves to airports and runways to close them down with peaceful protests, just like the brave Indian farmers and communities standing together right now in India? Charles, in answer to that question, I hope you're right. I hope enough people realize that if we don't deal with this now, we won't have tomorrow. And it's going to take people all over the world organizing themselves, starting spot fires of awareness in their own region, and peacefully, and that's the key word, peacefully demonstrating wherever they can. I know that's difficult with the CV-19 situation right now, but we are almost out of time. I can only hope this type of action takes place, and we cannot organize all this from geoengineeringwatch.org. I'm doing as much as is humanly possible given the time of a day in a day right now. We need everyone to organize, and it doesn't need to be a coordinated, centered effort in the sense that, as just as the colonists dealt with the British fighting from behind rocks and trees proverbially, We can each organize in our own area with our own awareness-raising efforts. And if we can reach a critical mass of awareness where our military brothers and sisters know what they're participating in, they're literally participating in their own demise, we must reach this level of critical awareness, critical mass of awareness. Bottom line is all of us are needed in that effort. So thank you for your questions, Charles, and let's hope that these types of steps do come. And again, key word, peaceful. Everything must be peaceful in regard to demonstrations. John asks, approximately how long will it be before the toxicity of the geoengineering being conducted will become irreversible in the human genetic pool? 
and what are some of the possible outcomes of this toxic filth that is being dumped into our skies? Thank you for your question, John, and that's exactly what it is, a toxic filth that's ubiquitous all over the planet right now. In regards to the effect on us, we do know some of the effects right now in that we know aluminum, as an example, is in the air column. We know it's in every single human test that we conduct, hair, blood, urine. We know that these heavy metals and polymers are in all of us. We know from peer-reviewed science study that there would be no Alzheimer's or dementia, for example, in the normal human lifespan of 100 years without the aluminum factor. So it's radically affecting all of us right now in regard to the long-term effects. For starters on that question, if we don't deal with this, if the human race doesn't completely change directions, we won't need to worry about the long-term effects because we won't be here. It's that simple. We face near-term planetary omnicide. So the bottom line is we can sort out some of the missing links in this equation later, but we must first and foremost plug this gaping hole in the bottom of the boat climate engineering operations, which are destroying, derailing, destroying, decimating Earth's life support systems and our human health. Bottom line, the effort to expose and halt climate engineering is nothing short of a fight for life. And again, we are rapidly running out of time. Next question, also from John. This is John A., different John. John A. asks, I have heard that the ozone thickness is so very, very thin. How thin is it? Question mark. Also, I hear it is responsible for giving the color blue that we see with our eyes. Is that true? Question mark. In answer to the first part of your question, John, our blue skies are the result of a particular type of light scattering called the Rayleigh scattering effect, which refers to the selective scattering of light off particles that are no bigger than one-tenth the wavelength of the light itself. With all the additional particles in the atmosphere, that absolutely has a massive effect on what we see now in regard to the light in our skies, the type of light. So in answer to your question, no, it's not just the ozone layer. It is the, the particles, the light scattering, light refracting particles in the atmosphere that affect this, and, and that has been radically altered at this point, and it's getting worse by the day. In regard to the ozone layer, ozone's only a trace gas in the atmosphere, only about three molecules for every 10 million molecules of air. So statistically, that would be about 0.00006% of the Earth's atmosphere. If the ozone layer was compressed to a layer of pure ozone at sea level, the thickness of that pure ozone layer would be about 2.6 millimeters thick. That's about two and a half stacked dimes. Very, very thin. And life on Earth hinges on that layer. Climate engineering is destroying that layer, systematically destroying it. Not the only causal factor, but the single biggest causal factor. And the paradox is, the worse the ozone scenario gets, the more the climate engineers ramp up their operations to try to mask the damage done from their operations to begin with. John A. continues with this statement. I used to love to see, 50 years ago, the white cotton candy artistic clouds always after a rain is gone are very rare to see now. He states, as I observed the so-called contrails around 1999, some stopped and started in our dark blue sky, and our sky started turning lighter blue with the increased trails. Again, light refracting particles. That is the definition of solar radiation management to block the sun's incoming thermal radiation, which decimates the color of our skies. Now we have the warnings from the science community that if we do climate engineering as if it hasn't been going on for 70 years already we can expect filthy skies dirty white skies that's exactly what we have and yet the climate science community continues to pretend that we're not seeing what we're seeing we live in an asylum thank you for your question john a moving on laura asks dane can you ask something for responses from the public question mark my husband and a friend are both in their 70s and both now have throats making mucus. Their speech sounds like they need to gargle and clear their voices. They both frequently are annoyed and feel like they need to, quote, clear their throats, but it doesn't last. Listening to them talk is also annoying to the listeners. I feel certain that this is a form of the stuff being sprayed, heavier now than ever before. Here in southern New Jersey for us and our friend, which Laura mentioned, lives in the middle of Florida. I know just watching his weather, he's much more cloudy than ever before. And I hope that I'm just imagining, but in the past few days, I'm clearing my throat too. And I don't go outside unless I have to because I have COPD. Laura finishes with this. I just thought that maybe there's a lot of people out there experiencing this and they don't have any idea why. You could take a poll on this 
for responses and from which states? Question mark. First, Laura, certainly it can't not be connected. It is connected. We are inhaling a massive amount of extremely inflammatory nanoparticulates, and we know this from lab testing. We're not guessing, theorizing, hypothesizing. To drive this point home as far as how much material is actually in the air, if you go outside on a dark night when there's been heavy aerosol operations and there's no wind, for example, and those materials have a time to settle down to the surface, you shine a very, very bright light up into the sky. It literally looks like it's snowing. And these particles are invisible during the daytime. But if you see this at night, it truly brings to full illustration of just how much we are inhaling with every breath we take. And again, highly inflammatory, very detrimental to the entire respiratory system, weakens that system, makes us all more susceptible to any and every form of pathogen, has a very cumulative effect on us. These particles are very bioavailable and bioaccumulative, so they build up in our system, very easily absorbed. Bottom line is, again, we're facing a fight for life, nothing less. If we can't hide from this type of contamination, then literally we must rise to the occasion. We must expose and halt this insanity before our health is beyond any form of recovery. In regard to taking any type of surveys, it would be very interesting to see such a survey. We are simply overwhelmed at geoengineeringwatch.org. We can't possibly conduct any such survey, but I hope that more and more come to the front line of this battle and help us to fill in some of these blanks because we need all the help we can get. Thanks for your question, Laura. Moving on from Susan. Susan asks, Dane, does this effort to awaken the population have any allies in the higher levels of the U.S. military? Short answer, Susan, yes, most definitely. We have, even had have spoken out publicly, we have two U.S. Air Force retired generals speaking out. In Canada, we have some very high-level government allies there. We believe that's the case around the world in, in many arenas. They're behind the scenes right now, but there are many who want these programs exposed and halted. We believe we have many allies. And in regard to the overall level of awareness on this issue, the undercurrent of awareness is much greater than is yet visible, but it's up to us to keep stoking these fires of awareness. And again, we must make every day count. Thank you for your question, Susan. From Elaine, this. Would you please give us updated news on the ozone layer? Elena, my last broadcast from February 13th, I did give an update from the former NASA contract engineer that works with geoengineeringwatch.org. The news is very, very bleak. Radical increase in surface level UV radiation. It's spiraling out of control. And again, we're in very uncharted territory. I can't stress that enough, but we are getting extraordinary amounts of even UVC on the surface now. Bottom line, if the current rate of ozone destruction continues, we are not going to be here much longer. Again, that's a mathematical and statistical fact, so we must keep in the forefront of our minds always. We are in a fight for life right here, right now. And exposing and halting climate engineering is a game of chess at this point, and we must learn how to play well. Back to having the components that are helpful in waking others up. Printed materials are so incredibly effective as compared to any verbal communication we can give. So keep that in mind. Full instructions on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org under the activist suggestions link as to how you can help make your voice heard in this battle. Thank you for your question, Elaine. Moving on from Anonymous. Anonymous writes, I'm writing from Switzerland and would like to stay anonymous. Thank you. No worries on that, Anonymous. Anonymous then states, I'm living in one of the rural areas of Switzerland where you find lots of farms, crops, cattle, and you will find out the following. The weather is being made most of the days. What I mean is the heaven is full of geoengineering and later on buried under a layer of, quote, clouds. What is interesting, though, is that the trails come with a certain smell. Mostly the spraying goes on at night and in the morning. You have two distinct smells, one or the other. Anonymous continues, if the sun is prohibited to shine, the smell is like a burned gum. If we get rain produced, the smell is like cold smoke. Anonymous then states, both of which are very intense, disgusting, and you immediately are inclined to close all windows and avoid going outside for a minimum of three hours. I live at a place where there is not much wind, so the whole thing remains above the village and seems to come down vertically. Do you know what is sprayed according to the smell? No, there is no industry in the village that could produce such emissions, and the connection between the spraying and smell is clear. Anonymous, we have reports of very differing odors from all over the world, and at any given moment, there's 
no way for us to know what's being dispersed. And the climate engineers have nothing to restrain them. And keep in mind as well, for those in power, populations all over the globe are becoming an increasing liability to them. That is very, very clear by those who have made statements on the record. Kissinger, Bill Gates, and the rest of the populations need to be reduced. And these dots are not hard to connect. So the climate engineering issue is something we cannot avoid. We can hide from an injection if we understand the risk involved with that and the agendas behind it. But can we hide from what's being dispersed in our skies into our breathable air column? Answer is no. Thank you, Anonymous, for reporting what you're experiencing in your country. Bottom line, we are all being sprayed like insects. No way around that. Final questions from Justin. Justin asks, could you describe in great detail the transformation you experienced from before your awareness of geoengineering and when you became aware of it? Completely transformed my entire life, Justin. Thank you for asking. And when I became observant of what was happening in the skies above my off-grid home and the loss of my solar power. And I began to research on the geoengineering issue and made note of the elements described in climate engineering patents. And I did my first precipitation tests, a precipitation that was falling over my wilderness area, over my home, over my habitat reserve. And I did not want to find these materials in my precipitation because I knew if I did, it would alter the course of my life forever. And indeed it did. And from a first test of seven parts per billion of aluminum, which was already high in my filtered forested location because there's nothing east of me from industry all the way to Japan, Subsequent tests in the next 18 months went as high as 3,450 parts per billion of aluminum. That is highly toxic rain. I knew I had no other choice but to completely alter the course of my life, face this battle head on, and to engage in every possible peaceful effort I could to bring this issue to light so that the entire population would know what their governments are doing to them without their knowledge or their consent. So long answer to your question, Justin, but it Yes, completely altered the course of my life now over 20 years ago. Final question, also from Justin. How do you feel about the progress and changes your efforts have inspired ever since you started this fight to expose and halt geoengineering nearly two decades ago? Again, now over two decades ago, Justin. Since that time, initially I could only hear my own voice coming back at me. And no one would listen to the data, no matter how compelling it was. But now... Thankfully, because of people like you and everyone who's written into this broadcast and all the other activists and individuals that understand the severity of what's being done to us and the ramifications, now the undercurrent of awareness is much, much bigger than we even see. And we are close to a tipping point, close to a critical mass of awareness in which a shockwave would travel around the globe when populations all over the world are forced to wake up to the fact that their governments have committed them to an experiment from which there is no return again, without their knowledge or their consent. And we need to reach that point as quickly as we possibly can. And that effort will take all of us. Again, go to the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org, search the activist suggestions link on the left column, find out how you can help, how you can make your voice heard in this most critical battle to sound the alarm. Thank you for your questions, Justin. I'm out of time for this week's session of Climate Engineering Q&A. My deepest thanks to all that have submitted questions to this session. To those that have submitted questions that I was not able to get to, I'll do my best to answer as many as possible in the next installment of Climate Engineering Q&A. If you wish to submit a question, please do so at the following email address, questions at geoengineeringwatch.org. Until next week, stay safe, stay strong. This is Dane Wigington from geoengineeringwatch.org.